Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another week on our road to 200K from our $24,000 principal by selling only credit spreads. I'm gonna take you guys right into it this week just to give you guys a quick update on my account and then like we always do, no change in format, our, our breakdown of our account portfolio. And this week I'll do a deep dive. Interesting story happened. I wanna walk you guys through what I did wrong again in this case. I forgot to do my due diligence, got a little complacent, quote unquote. But we'll get into that later this week. But for now, let's just take a look at our account performance. We're currently sitting at $140,444. I actually think there's some weird option pricing going on here. So a couple minutes before market closed, I was actually sitting around 135. Um, and then after market closed, it went up to 140. I think there's some weird option shenanigans going on. So I'm actually more in line with 135. I'm assuming the 140. I got to go into the records and kind of look into it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 140 for now, but I wouldn't be surprised if it drops to 135 next week um, just because of option pricing. I must say, yeah, we were sitting at 130 130k last week last friday and went up to 133 on monday tuesday the market fell our account fell to 125 that's an 8k drop that's pretty big wednesday went up to 131 I guess we covered most of it thursday went up to an all-time high of 135.5 and then a couple minutes before market closed that's kind of where i was 135.5 i was pretty flat today but i guess my account's at 140 somehow um, like i said i'm guessing it's uh it's option pricing but let's just assume that it's uh, 5k or 10k um i'm about to be there 5k or 10k over the week which is nothing to scoff at so either way up a little bit this week as the market kind of continues to fluctuate more and more and trying to find its uh find its footing but yeah 130 to either 140 or 135 so 5k or 10k depending on the option pricing that will happen on monday and then on on the one month we're 125 to one to say 140 for easy math 15k on the on the month we peaked at 132 and then on all-time high of 135 so either way we're at an all-time high on this account which is awesome um over the three month we're sitting at 97k on april 29th which means we're up 43k either 43k or 38k so either way that's almost 50 percent again um over that three month time frame which is pretty solid um, definitely not as good as when we first started where we were, we were 100%ing every three months. So I think those good days are over. Um, I think I've also made some mistakes and also been a little bit more conservative as the market has gone on. I did a little bit more experimenting. If you guys have tuned into some of my other deep dive series, like where I was trying to figure out how to sell calls, um, stuff like that. So I've lost a little bit more trades this time than I have in the past. Uh, six months is uh, 72K this January 29th. So we were up 150% in six months. Oh, sorry, 100% in six months, which is pretty good. And then year to date, definitely doubled um, in year to date. So 66K, more than 100% in seven months. Okay, now let's take a look at the market. Let's start with Dow Jones over the f over a five day period. The market is actually, oh, surprisingly, it was down 0.3% over the week. We're, si we're starting at. 35k oh barely down yeah 0.3 so sitting 34.9 it was an up day on monday oh kind of flat down on tuesday and up on wednesday actually no actually down flat on wednesday up on thursday and then down on friday just a little bit yeah it was down 0.42 percent today over the month still i guess relatively flat only up 0.9 percent so we've been playing those swings really well selling calls when it goes up and selling puts when it comes down just riding that momentum and then six month 15.6%. You can see that there's a kind of a, a triple top going in and eke into a uh, probably ascending triangle. I don't have a candlestick here, but I'm assuming that there's probably going to be a pullback uh, again, either this week or next week before it can move upwards. My assumption. So this one 3,500 is probably the current resistance that the market is hitting in order for it to break past. So I wouldn't expect some, I wouldn't um, be surprised if there's some more volatility into next week, um, especially as earnings seasons um, continue. And then oh, today, S&P 500 is down 0.5%. S&P 500 is down 0.4, so it was actually up uh, on Thursday, and then down over Friday, so it was up, down, similar to net down Jones, nothing too much. Um, one month, 1.74, six months, 16.47. So here again, I guess I've reached an all-time high. It's This is not as clear as the other one, this ABC pattern, the C didn't extend as far. So I'm assuming maybe the C has some more runway uh, before before I retest this previous high of 4300 so i'm assuming i don't know i spy is a little bit more interesting in my regards i'm not exactly sure how that that one will pan out but uh, i'm really not in any spy 
I guess if I were trading indices, I'm not really in much SPY at the moment, except for when it fell um, July 19th. I saw a lot of puts right below that. But this one will be an interesting one to take a look at, at least just based off of the line chart that I see here. Now, finally, NASDAQ is down 0.71% on the day, down 1.17 on the week. The, the drop on Monday was pretty, pretty sorry, Tuesday was pretty intense. That was pretty, yeah, that was, that was a pretty large drop. Market basically recovered until Friday, so down 1.17. Yeah, not a great week for NASDAQ. And on the month, it's up 1%. So in line with the other three major indices. And on the sixth month, this one looks a lot like um, SPY, where the move was so fast, it kind of fell and went bounced back up at an all-time high. Now, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here. When I don't know, I don't really trade it. So I'm not in any QQQ, for example, or NASDAQ-related indices trading because it can either go up or down. The market hasn't really de defined this just yet. Um, the next logical level is probably if this was an uptrend, an A, an A, B, C pattern down here, and then D up here. Um, or if this could be the peak, I would say this resistance here is probably very similar. 1480 and 1470 is 1470 is like a hundred point difference, so not that big of a difference. Just I think this is more of a wait and see kind of moment than anything else. But yeah, I mean this was an interesting week. Earnings, the tech earnings seasons popped off, uh, kicked off right at Microsoft earnings extended guidance google killed it so they they shot up facebook i guess fell amazon was a big one that fell i think on thursday um paypal fell i think well i, th I think tesla was this week too tesla reported really really good earnings i believe it actually f was flat um when the market opened on tuesday so a lot of movement here on the stocks a, a lot of movement on the on the more popular retail stocks and institutional stocks like the big tech companies apple for example killed it iphone sales went off the charts we're doing really well in accordance to the market. I, we have we have a green week when the market was down. So whenever that happens, that makes me really, really happy. Yeah. Now let's take a look into my account breakdown. I've actually had a lot of spreads expire this week. The account has changed quite a lot over the last four or five days. So starting off, let's just go around the circle like we always do. We'll start with uh, alphabetical order, Apple. Apple sitting at 2000. No change from last week. These are actually expiring, so I wasn't able to close them out. No, no liquidity again, so these will expire out this week, and then they'll show up as cash in my account next week. Uh, AMD is at five thousand. Amazon's at six thousand. ATVI, this is new. CRM's at five thousand. Dow Jones is still at ten thousand. Disney is twenty-three thousand, so my largest holdings in Disney. Intel is up again to fifteen thousand. Uh, Mastercard is new, twenty-five hundred. Moo, 20,000 still, Netflix, 18,000, Spy, 12,000, Square, 5,000, Tesla's up, 10,000, TSM, 10,000, Take Two is also new, 6,000, uh, TXN, Texas Instruments, 7,000, Xilinx is 5,000 still, and then Zoom is also new, which is 5,000. So you can kind of see there's a couple new tickers in there, if I remember correctly, four new tickers. And so all in all, summed up, we're at 172K, give or take in total collateral up almost 20k from last week so we entered a lot of positions this week as we entered a lot of positions last week so these last two weeks have been very heavy on buying it's not going to be like that every single week now let's take a look quick look at the delta of our accounts on the screen you'll see all the deltas broken out um we don't care about the zeros so amd we dropped by 5,000. amazon we're up 2,000. Uh, i was eyeing the level on amazon i've been eyeing it for a long time and it fell close enough to it that I felt comfortable enough entering it. We've been very patient with Amazon um, and not trading it at all until it hit our level and it did this week. So we entered only a little bit because I didn't have too much cash this week. Uh, I actually traded on Friday today to en enter some Amazons. I usually don't do that, but I've been waiting for it because Amazon record, uh, report earnings on Thursdays. And so next week, I how do you anticipate that Amazon number going up? Again, ATVI, 5,000. Uh, Disney 2000, Intel's up 5000, Mastercard's also new 2500, Netflix is also up 1500, Square we were able to sell out at a profit for 5000, Tesla we're up another 5000, TSM we're, we sold out and made a profit 5000, Take 2 also new 6000 up, TXN Texture Instruments down 1000, Zoom also new up 5000 and Cash I guess we're up $322. Let's move on to the credit received in our account. So on the screen you'll see the credit and collateral breakdown for all of the spreads that I sold. Summed up, Amazon's at $15.50 for $6,000 worth of collateral. ATVI, $14.40 collected for $5,000 worth of collateral. Disney, $16.70 for $7,000. Uh, 
Intel 1400 for 5000, so that's around 28%. Mascar 308 for 2500. Uh, Moo 1600 for 5000. Uh, Netflix 1831 for 6500. Tesla 1975 for 10,000. And Take Two 1880 for 6000. Texas Instruments $1,010 for $5,000 worth of collateral. And Zoom is 1435 for 5000. So you can see the breakdown on the screen. Nothing spectacular. AMD, Disney, Moo. Um, I spend $1,000 to close it out and $1,600 of credit collected. So an influx of cash, about six thousand dollars. But that doesn't mean that I made profit on this on this trade. You'll see that later on that I did, but this is not how profit is calculated. View it as like free cash flow. What cash is coming in versus what cash is going out. Now, lastly, take a look at profit. This is a very profitable week for us in terms of like the spreads that we opened. Um, we won a hundred percent of our trades. So if you were to bring up the math, uh, Apple, I made four hundred eight dollars of profit. This is the one that hasn't expired yet but will because I wasn't able to close out because of liquidity issues, but that's fine, 408. Um, AMD, 1100 for $60 of debit, so I made a profit of 1040. Uh, Dow Jones, also couldn't close it out because of liquidity issues, made $1,000. Disney, 1116, $80 worth of uh, debit, so 936. Moo, the one that I spent $1,000 on, I actually only made $260 because so I collected 1260 on this one trade, so $260 of profit. You know, not great, but at least it's profitable. Netflix, fifteen hundred to forty dollars of debit, so fourteen sixty. QQQ, two ninety four. These are calls, um, three seventies if I remember correctly. One twenty debit, so one seventy four of of total profit. Spies, well, four seventy forty dollars or four thirty. Spies, a uh, square, ten sixty forty, ten twenty profit. Tesla, pretty profitable here, twelve thirty, one fifty. Made a profit of ten eighty, so cl slowly clawing our way back on Tesla. TSM, again, uh, same thing, $900, $100 of debit, $800 of profit, and Texas Instruments, $1,704 of credit, only $200 spent to close it, so $1,488 of total profit. Sum that all up, I spent, I collected a total credit of spreads expiring this week, $12,042. Debit spent close to two grand, closing out some of my spreads, bringing us to a debit total profit of $10,096 yeah, $10, of total profit of this week. So very profitable week for us. But yeah, that's basically it. Never gamble. Try to do your best, do your due diligence. Yeah, that's about it. Um, look out for the deep dive later this series, uh, this week, and I'm working on a technical analysis series. Uh, I know that there has been some asks about it for quite a while. Again, I'm trying to get as much done as possible, so I appreciate the patience uh, until later this week. Have a good weekend, and peace.